Well, now we're going to hear from Brother Daniel Sibley. Brother Sibley was born just over 70 years ago and took up the pioneer ministry in the year of 1941. A little while after that, Brother Sibley spent some time in prison because of the neutrality issue. And then in 1946 began his service in the Bethel at Brooklyn. In 1974, he was invited to become part of the governing body. So we're very happy to uh, have Brother Sidley with us uh, this afternoon. And the title of his discussion is Happy is the People Whose God is Jehovah. My wife and I want to thank you very much for inviting us to your dedication program here. It's been an exciting time for us. We flew into Australia and we've come to love it here. We love your weather and we love your people. And now something additional has been added. We love your orchestra. So, <laughs> this is very lovely. And <laughs> We love it so much around here, I think we're going to come back, really. Um, <laughs> since we don't uh, have time to speak to all of you, many of you want to know just how we felt about this place. Well, in an airline seat pocket in the plane that we came over here on, it was a United, by the way. <laughs> there was a travel brochure that said, if you think you are in paradise, then you are in Australia. <laughs> Frankly, I've been in Australia for seven days, and now I'm convinced that the brochure is right. This is paradise, or at least a piece of it. And Jehovah said, that his people would be happy. Jehovah himself has promised this in the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, verses 2 to 5. You may want to look at that. There he says, For look, darkness itself covers the earth, and thick gloom the national groups. But upon you, Jehovah will shine forth, and upon you, his own glory will be seen. And nations will certainly go to your light and kings to the brightness of your shining forth. Raise your eyes all around and see. They have all of them been collected together and they come to you. From far away your own sons keep coming and your daughters who will be taken care of on the flank. At that time you will see and certainly become radiant and your heart will actually quiver and expand because to you the wealthiness of the sea will direct itself. The very resources of the nations will come to you. And we rejoice to see the fulfillment of that prophecy today. Everywhere you go today in the earth, Jehovah's people are rejoicing. It's not simply here. No matter where you go, from the pits the New York subway system where our brothers go to witness and where people live and travel in fear to the communist countries where people live in gloom and doom in a very real way God's people are rejoicing they're happy people they're happy because they serve a happy God Jehovah wants them to be happy and we're happy because we're taught by Jehovah. We're happy because we have a hope for life. He's given us work to do. And we're happy because we have real food, food for the mind and the heart. And as Isaiah 65 verse 13 says, we have food to eat and water to drink, which makes us happy. Jehovah says, look, my own servants will rejoice. They will cry out joyfully because of the goodness of the heart. So the food that we eat, this spiritual food that we take in, and 
and the water that we drink makes our heart healthy and strong. Happiness is the outward manifestation of the life we lead and the peace that we enjoy. Jehovah, our great instructor, has taught us that our joy is the footage of his spirit. And the more spirit we take in from God, the happier we will be. It is a life not of having, but of being. Not of having many possessions, but of enjoying what we have. Happiness is the art of being content with what we have and not concerned so much about what we have not. Paul said in 1 Timothy 6.6, 6, Godly devotion with self-sufficiency is great gain. In the King James Version we read, Godliness with contentment is great gain. So this art of living Jehovah has taught us, and happy are the people whose God is Jehovah. We have learned from Jehovah many things. Happiness is not being somewhere. Happiness is not being in Florida or Hawaii. Sorry to say, not even in New Zealand or the beautiful mountains or Perth or the Gold Coast. I love Gold Coast, by the way. It's a nice place. But happiness is enjoying where you are, appreciating the people that you're with, and loving the little or the much that you have. A brother was invited to battle. You'd think he'd be the happiest person in the world, and he was for a while. And then he noticed somebody had a car. And he wondered why he didn't have an automobile. And he began to feel miserable about it. So he bought himself a car. He didn't know how happy he was until that moment. <laughs> <laughs> then came the parking problem. Then came the repair bill. Then came vandalism. The man got rid of his car to be happy again. <laughs> Brother was single. <laughs> he saw some dear ones holding hands and they looked very nice to him. So what do you think? You're right. He got himself a wife. He never realized how happy he was until that moment. <laughs> Take it whatever way you want. A five-year-old girl was raised by her grandma. And her mother said the best life in the world is for you to be a missionary. And this girl was inspired by what her grandmother said, and her whole inclination was to go to Gideon. And she did come to Gideon. And she did receive her foreign assignment. Life was sheer ecstasy for this girl in her foreign assignment, until her roommate offended her with some bad habits. She then became terribly unhappy, allowing what her roommate did to upset her. One thing led to another, and before the year was out, she left her assignment, and she lost her joy for a while. So we have to be careful with how we treat happiness. These experiences should teach us a lesson not to let others hold the key to our happiness. Because if we do, we're going to be very unhappy persons from time to time. This shows us that happiness depends more on how we meet life's events than on the very nature of those events. Disappointments are everywhere, brothers. 
We live in an imperfect world. We ourselves are imperfect. So things are bound to go wrong. What are we going to do? Are we going to get in the corner and weep? Are we going to complain and find fault? A lot of good that will do. Well, life is made up of a lot of giving and taking. <coughs> Happiness is up to us. It is the way we think. The Apostle Paul says, Romans 12, 1 and 2, make your minds over. Be transformed. That you may prove to yourself that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Happiness is not dependent on where we are. Not even as to who we are, but on what we are. Because it is not because we know things, but because we do things. Happiness is not so much doing what we like, but liking what we do. It is making the best of a situation no matter how bad it might be. Apostle Paul and Silas were in prison at midnight, and it stops. What could be more miserable than that? But there they were doing what? Singing to Jehovah's praise. My beautiful, making the best out of a bad situation. Therefore, we find people in hospitals often quite happy, and we're surprised at this. We look at handicapped persons, and we notice that they're happy. They cope with life. I'd like to tell you about Don Lardy, a brother in Texas that is completely blind in both eyes. He's pioneering. This year, he says, I want to go to Norway and to Poland because I want to see my brothers. <laughs> Isn't that something? Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> this brother had a ball of a good time. Well, then the brother said to him, it must be tough to be blind on. What he said to this brother, you have your problems, I have mine. <laughs> we work them out together, don't we? You see? And this is the truth. We've got to look at life this way. It makes, well, he made the most out of life. He enjoys this miracle of life that God has given us. In fact, in Poland, he was visiting Chopin's Park or that memorial there, and they had a huge orchestra there, and they invited him into the orchestra to play the piano because this brother is a concert pianist. And he played kingdom songs for that whole crowd. <laughs> so it's that lovely opportunity. depends largely not on our being, but doing. A woman said to Jesus, happy is the womb before you, or the womb that bore you, and the breast that gave you sight. Jesus said, no woman, you have this wrong. Happy are those hearing these words of mine, and do them. That's where happiness is. Happiness is doing God's will. Isaiah 32, 20 says, Happy are you people who are sowing seed along the waters. The way to life, sow these seeds, and it will make you happy. Isaiah 56, 1 and 2, Happy are the people who keep justice and righteousness. And then we have, Happy are you people whose God is Jehovah. What makes for happiness? Put well, a glance to your concordance and you'll find that it says, happy are those who take or who make refuge or Jehovah the refuge. Happy are those who trust in Jehovah. Happy are those whose strength is in Jehovah. Happy are those who fear Jehovah. And happy are those who walk in his law. Happy are those who observe as reminders. Being with God makes us happy, brothers. You cannot be unhappy walking with God. Isn't that lovely if we just do that? <laughs> nowhere, nowhere does the Bible say 
say that happiness is connected with a good job. <laughs> Nowhere does the Bible say you need a says that you need a lovely car to be happy. Not bad to have one. What does it say will make you happy? Nowhere does the Bible say you need to find a house or a good bank account or a lovely insurance policy. Those things can and do add to happiness. No one's going to deny that. But to have material possessions without God is a life of emptiness. It's misery. People who do not know God don't know what happiness is all about. It's only when they come into Jehovah's organization that they begin to taste what happiness is. Happiness is linked with our very thoughts of God. That's why happiness belongs to those, those who search for Jehovah daily with all their heart. Thoughts of Jehovah enrich our mind and heart. They give us peace and hope. God's thoughts our happy companions. When we are alone, think about the thoughts of Jehovah, and you'd be surprised how happy you get. Or even when you're with someone, use the thoughts of Jehovah, and you'll be surprised how you can make them happy too. One sister in Brazil told me that she was very unhappy and yet she had Bible studies and didn't know what was wrong with her. And an elder told her, why don't you go to an older sister and tell your problem to her. And you know what the older sister said? I felt just like you, and I went to an older sister. And this older sister told me, why don't you wake up early in the morning and just think about Jehovah for an hour? She said, sit back and meditate. Talk to God. And this sister said, I went there early in the morning in the living room, and she says, I felt foolish because I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how to talk to God. And then slowly the words came. And then she says, that surprised me. I could hear the refrigerator. I never heard the refrigerator before. I heard a bird sing. I never heard it before. I heard the wind in the trees. And she said, I began to talk to God. And her whole misery went away by simply communing with Jehovah. Listen to what the psalmist said. What joy there is in the reading of the psalms. Oh, what is man that you are mindful of him and the Son of Man that you visit him? You have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with honor and glory and made him to have dominion over you have placed all things beneath his feet. My, when you read the Psalms, you feel ten feet tall. Strength comes into your bones. You rejoice that you have the truth, that you know Jehovah, and the Bible means something to you, you see. Why then do some get unhappy and depressed at times? There's no simple answer to a question like that, but so often it is because they're self-centered. They allow their thoughts to be centered on themselves. And when we do that, we open the door to unhappiness, and it comes into our lives. Romans 15, 3 said, For even Christ did not please himself. Once we center our thoughts on ourselves, our aches. My, if you ask somebody who had an operation, that's the worst thing you can do. You sit there all day listening about it, you see. Once we center our thoughts on our aches and our pains, our pride and our vanity, we lose touch with spiritual values. We are no longer conscious of our spiritual needs. In other words, we are suffering spiritually. Our faith is suffering. That's why we're in hell. We cannot be close to God and at the same time be unhappy, brothers. So, sadness, depression, and unhappiness are times when we should redouble our efforts to draw close to God. In prayer, in thoughts, in meditation, in the way we feel, 
It is time to examine our hearts and minds to test whether we're in the faith to prove what we ourselves are. David wrote, Happy is the able-bodied man whom you have corrected, O John. Let Jehovah adjust your heart and your thinking, and you'll be made happy. True happiness is built on virtue. Its roots are deeply embedded in the Word of God. Knowing that means we can prepare ourselves for happiness, brother. Every last one of us can do that by having a good Bible study program. Yes, which involves personal study of the Bible every day. Pick it up, read a little bit about it. Even a minute is better than nothing at all. Yes, study your Bible. Also, set aside time for meditation, for re reflection on a beautiful day, the joy of living, to be able to pray. Think that Jehovah listens to your prayers. It scares you half to death half the time. <laughs> but this great God is so beautiful, so wonderful that he listens to us. We've got to involve ourselves with kingdom activity. As Isaiah says, learn to sow seeds, talk about the kingdom. Attend the meetings, participate and associate with Jehovah's people. That is what will help us from becoming depressed, downhearted, sad, or lonely. We must learn to do what Jehovah tells us to do at Romans chapter 12, verse 5. Rejoice with people who rejoice. Paul says, once more I say unto you, Rejoice. So it is a command from God that we be happy, that we rejoice, that we have come to know Him, the fountain of living waters. However, notwithstanding all of this, if you still find yourself unhappy, despondent, down in the dumps, what are you going to do? You've done everything I've said for you to do, and you're still unhappy. One of the best remedies in the world is to grab your book bag loaded with books and Bibles and go knocking on doors. Tell the people about the kingdom because you're going to be in the best company there is. You're going to be in the company of angels that go with you. And once you spread the good news, the spirit of Jehovah will return. But if that does not work for you, what then? The Bible gives the answer in one word, endure. Nothing triumphs like endurance, brothers. You will reap if you don't give up. Let's now open our Bibles to James. James chapter 1, verse 12. Happy is the man that keeps on enduring trials. Because on becoming approved, he will receive the crown of life which Jehovah promised to those who continue loving him. Our motive, brothers, for serving Jehovah must not be because we want to be happy. Or if that be our motive, we will never be happy. Our motive must be love. It is by loving our God that we become happy. It is by loving our neighbor as ourselves that we become happy. So, you happy witnesses, keep loving Jehovah. Keep loving your neighbor. So you remain happy people. <laughs>